the Victim to Victory podcast series. My name is Tracy Cook, and this series gives a voice to those that have overcome challenges in all forms, but dare greatly to share their real stories, amazing humans that have seen hope risen above those adversities to become victorious, that go on to support and inspire others to do the same. And today I've got a very special guest from North Carolina in the US, Arthur Mitchell. We're going to call him Art and he has got a powerful message to share with us. Welcome to the Victim to Victory podcast series. How are you? I'm doing fine, Tracy. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. Oh, it is my pleasure. Now, I just want to give a little bit of a background and I don't want to take away from your story because I want you to tell your story. Obviously, you tell it better than anybody else and it's very powerful and we'll be sharing how people can connect with you as well. Um, Art was diagnosed with an eye disease and um, he's going to go into his story for that as well. And he's turned his pain into purpose, which is a powerful message, an absolutely powerful message. And um, he, he's, a, he's a husband um, and he's got three beautiful children and um, he's gone on to work with youth as well. Now, that is just a, a very broad, quick uh, spectrum of the, the amazingness and the powerfulness of, of art. So where does your story begin? And let us get to know you. Who is Art? Yes, ma'am. My name is Arthur Mitchell. I'm 38 years old from um, Charlotte, North Carolina. And yes, Tracy, I got an unusual story. Um, let's, I'm going to take you back a little bit. Remember, um, let's go to the age of six years old. I know the age of six year olds, a lot of people out there want to go play in the jungle gym, want to go to the sand, or want to, want to do hide and seek. But at the age of six, I was trying to see. See, at the age of six, I was, I was diagnosed with an eye disease called keratoconus. And what keratoconus is, is an eye disease where how your eye is oval, but mine's like a football shape, pressing on my pupil, allowing my vision to be blurry. So finding out at the age of six became very unusual for me, having an unusual childhood, not able to go outside with the crowd, not able to um, not do certain things because first I had to um, try to see and not run into nobody, but also understand the disease I had. So having a disease at the age of six, I found out that, that and, um, rarely in the disease, it happens at the age of 15 on up. So having the age of six became unusual for me because neither my parents knew what was going on, or something new. I never had any symptoms, but to go to an eye doctor, I find out I have keratoconus. was unusual. So it allowed me moving forward um, to, to try glasses. Now, glasses worked for a while, but it, can't, it wasn't strong enough for my, for my disease to make me see better. So they went from glasses to stronger prescription. And doing all this, you know, people were wondering what's going on with me, calling me names, being bullied. So, so, so much going on that I dealt with because... I didn't really, I didn't know when to tell them what's going on because I tell somebody to this day, they wouldn't know what character kind of deal unless I explain it. So telling them at that age, I, you know, I just brush it off, whatever, but and look at how my contacts and different contacts, they work well because, you know, when the contact, it goes on your on, on your cornea and it, and it allows your um, vision to be clear and it, it works. But at the age of you know, elementary middle school, I was kind of careless. You no, know, um, they, I either I went to sleep or I step on it. Different things happen, but that's irritated my eyes. So I couldn't wear like that. So I ended up getting taught, um, sent to a doctor in Durham, North Carolina, um, and to do medical center. And they told me about a procedure called cornea transplant. And what a cornea transplant is, is basically it's a, you're getting a donor of another cornea of a deceased person. You no, know, and um, it gives you, you know, make, make your vision um, different. It gives you that cornea to see better. So I ended up getting my first one because I wanted to be able to see because I know we didn't really know much about it, but I know I wanted to see. I was tired of you know, not doing what I want to do, not be able to play sports like I wanted to, not be able to do the normal things because you know, I couldn't really see at nighttime because it was glaring. And daytime, I, I, I like sensitive. So I was to myself that much. I didn't really want to go out there and do different things. So when I found out about this procedure, I went, I went ahead and got it. Didn't know I would have, didn't know seven surgeries later <laughs> that I was gonna have, um, I was gonna it was gonna be that many surgeries. Had seven eye surgeries, and people like man, you had seven eye surgeries. I said I said the same thing. Yes, why? Because you know people get um, leg surgery, or, or ACL tear, they get the surgery, or heart treatment, but having somebody go directly to your eye seven times, it was it was kind of difficult. So I, I dealt with that because I don't know every. It, it kept rejecting. It kept, every time it kept rejecting the both eyes, and and I couldn't see why. So I had to go there again, go there again. My last one was a cataract surgery, 
So the last one, with cannabis, you make my vision turn from, from a 20 over 200 to now a 2040 and 2050. And that's where I, I stand um, and now and I haven't worn glasses in five years. And that's the point where I know now it's time to be talking about paying it to purpose. That is just um, amazing. I mean, at six years of age, that probably encompassed a bit of, like you said, a bit of bullying and things like that as well, because kids can be cruel because kids don't understand or they're conditioned by their parents. And, mm -hmm. you know, to, to have not only a, a physical, um, you know, um, barrier, but to also go through, you know, having the, the trouble with your vision and six eye operations. Wow. So wow. I couldn't even imagine. Um, that's and, and that's mentally draining as well to keep going in, having the surgery, prepare, you know, and, and having to keep yes. going back. That's, um, yeah, that's a mindset shift. So do you think that that actually made you stronger in your mindset? Does that actually make you more focused or was there an area where it was quite depressing? It, it was definitely everywhere quite depressing because because I'll never forget I just got married and um my wife she didn't really know too much about the surgery but I explained to her when we got married so she can you know do the research and know if anything happened what to do so I ended up having my sixth eye surgery and um, I, I when I woke back up from anesthesia my eye was still the same still blurred I couldn't I didn't know what was going on I, I couldn't see I said what why why I can't see now I know the other ones I had maybe two three days later take the patch off. So the address was good, but this one I couldn't see the same way I came in. I came back out the same way, you know. And I went to the depression stage. I went to a, a stage with no a loneliness. Like nobody came by, saw me. Nobody understood what's going on. Nobody checked up on me. Just me and my my wife and my kids. And um, I went to her. And I forget. I went to her, Miss Tracy. I said, um, why does every time something go good, it gets bad? I broke down. So I, I, I was confused. I said, I, I, I had six eye surgery. I've been over this six years old. Why does this keep on happening to me? Why, why can't, why I can't get better? Why I can't see better? Why I can't do the normal thing as a kid, as a, as a adult at that time better? And you no, know, I she just hugged me and said it's gonna be okay. But yeah, it was very really depressing. But in that depressing stage, after I got out of that, I was able to understand now. You no, know, the strength I had. You no, know, anybody can do it through seven eye surgeries. Got to be strong. Oh, no, gotta and, be. Gotta be, 100%, 100%. There's always a lesson to be learned with whatever, um, you know, is delivered to us, right? It's like you're there to, yeah. to get a message and it's not always clear at the beginning and how brave and passionate for your wife and your family to stand by you and support you through all of those um, surgeries as well. She must be an amazing woman. Yes, man, yes, man. I love it. Death is been seven years and... And when she first when she first found out about it, she was just curious, like um, if I go blind, what to do? So you know, she had questions, everything. But after that, after the one that she seen me with the six when I broke down, she really understood how pain I was going through and just comforted me and, and kept me um motivated and just told me it's gonna be okay because I ever needed that. Like no my no my friends came by, nobody checked up on me, and like I was like, what's going on? Like I can't see, and then I can't see nobody coming to me. So it was just so much. But it, it, I say it strengthened my mindset to know that, no, if you can go through this, you go to anything. And I always tell people, man, only the strongest survive. Oh, only the strong. And you are That's one of the strong, my friend. You are one of the strongest people to go through that and to have your family stand by you and to persevere and to go into a surgery and still come out the same. I mean, that's a really hard, challenging overcome so where, where did your journey take you after that art? Well, after that, after that, it took me to a, to a place where okay, now I gotta now I know it's not it's about me and my family. No one now I know I gotta do 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 if I have to shift, I have to do a paradigm shift, I have to really understand the purpose of why this kept happening, and the, and the, and really the outcome behind all this because I I was I was still kind of confused, but I ended up getting to this community that helped me really restore my mindset give me a great personal development. It helped me find, you know, what, 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 what I was going through, how to turn up my pain to purpose, you know, how to pivot it, how to mindset shift, how to really take this and really help others understand that you, know, you can do it, they can do it too. Definitely, because when we actually 
pave the way. And when we share our stories and the power of our stories, we're giving people a helping hand up and not a push down. We're more relatable and people don't feel as alone, do they? When we share our stories, they're like, oh, I know somebody who's got that or somebody in my family's, you know, been through that or I've been through that. And the connection um, through mindset and sharing stories is very, very powerful. And we all have the greatness within us, don't we? You know, like the, mm -hmm. the famous Les Brown says, you know, we've got the greatness within us. Yeah. And, um, you know, when, when, that's, when, when we find the message in our mess, that's when we know what our greatness is and it, and it pushes us towards our passion and our purpose 100%. That's so true, yes, ma'am. So where did, um, when you've connected with your community and you're doing personal development and you're growing internally and you're becoming possibly more confident, where did that lead you next? It led me next to actually creating my brand, which I have on now, the I Am brand. I have my shirt on. Oh, I yeah, am. I am. And the actual step of I Am are a mitch, but it's a message behind what I say because I'm, the words of I am bold, I am smart, I am confident, I am determined, I am successful, I am enough. And in those affirmations, I had to speak those to me daily to get to get through this, get through my everyday life, my everyday routine. I woke up, I pray, I um, read my word, um, that I speak the affirmations because it, it got me through a lot of a lot of defiant situations where I know I, that when I feel like giving up, I, I read, I am bold, I am smart, I am confident. So allow me to create my brand to help others with disabilities and, and different kind of things that go into life, if not disability, but in life and in business as well, to give my hope, a, a promise and future over that rainbow to know, to get that, that you can do it, that you are great, you are successful, no matter what it looks like, no matter who you are, no matter where you came from, you know, you are great, you are bold, you are smart. And if you believe that, it, you can achieve it. 100%. And where we Wait, can you go through the I am's again? I am. I am bold. I am smart. I am successful. I am determined and I am enough. Oh man, that is powerful. And when you're saying them to yourselves in an affirmation every single morning, if that doesn't shift someone's mindset, if that doesn't make them dig deeper to find the greatness within themselves, I don't know what will. And it's a fantastic brand, everybody. I am. You need to look up Art and check out his brand because it stands for something. It actually stands for something. It's not just putting words on a T-shirt and selling T-shirts. This is a brand of empowerment. This is a yeah. brand where it's helping young people to have a brighter future. Now, tell us a bit more about that kind of, um, like the pipeline you've got with the youth at the moment. Yes, man. Well, um, well one thing I do with youth, I, I give them coping strategies and support to help them being bullied through their disabilities. Because a lot of times, you know, I learned a lot of times, we don't know how to handle certain situations with disabilities, you know, whether it's ADHD or different kind of you know, ailments we go through that they don't know how to handle it. So I wrote a book also well called The Six Tips to Cope with Having a Disability. And that book I give I, I give and I teach kids the six strategies that I use to help them with the disability, help them cope with the disability, help them um, understand who they are, even talk about personal development, and then just creating different hobbies that will get your mind off the negativity. Because I found out too, if you got that, you know, if you have a hobby or something that you know that you love and do, you're focusing more on that than what you're going through. So allow your mindset to shift to a positive way that you can not only think about that, but to you create you know, different momentums or different changes in your lifestyle to give you that 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 push or that that, that encouragement to keep on going and moving further in life. 100%. And just even having those empowerment strategies that you're delivering, it's kind of, this is where I was, this is how I overcome. These are the empowered strategies that got me through the darkest times. And it can help you too. It's kind of like a shortcut, like a how to guide, right? Yeah. And what are some success stories or some um, testimonials you received off of sharing your messages has what what uh, what kind of lives have you changed? Yes, man. I, that, that's great you asked. Um, I just I, I've been talking to a, I, I joined some um creative corners groups on Facebook, so I end up on um, I'm coming a mentor on there. No, didn't didn't know too much about it, but I had I reached out to two kids and I've been helping them. And the guy the other day put on my Facebook page that I want to let y'all know this man right here and helped me out. 
you know, I had I had to have cares of Conus, but his encouraging words and him and him telling me it's gonna be okay, allow me to get through my surgery well, he's doing well now. We talk every day, then I had an actual guy that he he um he, he inboxed me about being a mentor through Cats of Conus, and I'm I've been helping him as well. He did, he saw my documentary that I made with Cats of Conus and it really gave him um a better mindset shift of having the disease because you no, know, he just got it. And he know how to handle it, but because my, my documentary me talking to him, he's not able to handle it more better and uh, handle the situation while he's in school as well. That's so powerful. And you're just probably, uh, well, I know you are not probably, you are helping so many people and especially for for pe- young men, especially, or any any age, you know, men, especially the younger ones, if they're going through kind of the bullying, they're going through the disempowerment, they're lost, they don't have a direction, maybe they don't have a father figure or a bigger brother figure to kind of guide them in the right direction, then, you know, they can go into deep places of depression if they haven't got a mentor there to kind of point them in the right direction, say it's going to be okay, get up, you can do it, I've got you, this is what I experienced, I hear you, I got you, and I know what you're going through. And mm-hmm. wh- where are you today? Um, wh- what other kind of um, community work and, and how's your mindset at the moment? Because you've been on quite a journey already. Yes, man, well, my mindset I, right now, and the mindset is very, it's in a place now where I'm here to impact as much of people as possible. No, my, I work with various organizations, um, I work with schools. I just got an um, email about a school I'm about to start working with now. Um, I'm doing different charity, um, volunteer work with um, uh, champion, a place called Champion House of Care with Disabilities. And I'm just out there, man, trying to make an impact on people and um, giving them a, a hope. And I'm, I, I tell people all the time that, you know, when your mind matches your destiny, anything is possible. And that if you believe in what you're doing, it's going it's to be okay. And I, 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 I give them that message because also have a thing where it had, took me to a place in this pandemic, you know, with the, everything going on, I, it called this power in the pandemic. Now, when this pandemic, it really strengthened my mindset, you know, because, you know, mental health is real, you know, and dealing with, and, and having, you know, a disability in this whole coronavirus thing can get, can get you really depressed, get you really on your mind and the dark pillar, like you said, and things happen. So I decided to create my brand in a pandemic and wrote two books. That allowed me to continue to keep my strength going, my momentum going in, and to give people a promise in the future that you no, know, it's gonna be okay. That no matter what it looks like, you still, you're still human. You still, you're still great. You're still good at what you can do. And you can still can conquer your goals. Though, no, don't stop. Keep on going because because of the pandemic, don't mean that you can't be successful and achieve every goal that you desire to go out and reach. Fantastic. And how old are your children, and what are they thinking about your messages, and how is it affecting your family? I bet you they're just super proud of their dad. Yes, man. I got um, that's my the name. Of my company is Zaj Zaj Inspirations, and it's my my kid name Z A J. As Amaya, Ariana, and Jaden, and they're ten, six, and five, and they they love what they love what daddy doing. They see daddy all the time working them. Um, when I, I know when they first um <clears throat> told them about my own um, disease, there was no asking questions, and and me and my wife sit down and talk to them. So now they can tell you my story. I was able to know still know what daddy went through, how, how daddy you know had the surgeries and, and different things. And to see how hard daddy working with the brand and I am. They around the house and I am all the time. They, you know, they, they want to wear a the shirt, they want to tell people about it. So and everybody's really happy about you know, the place we at now. We just continue to grow and um, we want we want to make this a movement. We don't want to let people know that I am, that you are somebody, no matter what. And now my, my kids know about it, my wife know about it, my family support me. So Things are really going good with that. Even then, I said, even again, once again, it's pandemic, you know, we still in a place where you're still going to create impact and make moves. Uh, I think it's fantastic. So you, you're building a legacy. You're empowering your children to be the very best versions of themselves and to see people as they are because to see the abilities in the, in the disabilities, right? To be mm. able to meet people where they're at and just accept people for who they are what they are regardless right your mm. legacy that you're leaving to your children and your children will go on and impact generations as well i think that is just such the way forward especially in 2020 showing those signs of empowered hope and that movement behind the message as well and being consistent with your brand and your message and all of the people that you're touching and 
when you're going out, are you going into the schools speaking as well? All right now, everything is virtual. So we're just doing virtual. Now, yeah, then, um, I know people, actually, the kids are about to start going at school in November, but it probably won't be no, no, no hands off things probably next school year or next, next year. But everything's been virtual, which is okay because I'm, I'm, I know I'm able to see their faces and see their paying attention in the rise with the classroom, people looking here and here. So I've been doing that virtual and I'm getting some good feedback with that. And um, people just, you know, been, been hearing my story, been a couple of podcasts, people just, you know, hear my story and the power behind it. So that's what, I, that's what I've been doing. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And everybody, if you're listening and light bulbs have just gone off, if you've got goosebumps from the inspiring words of art and his empowerment movement, he is an amazing father. He is an amazing husband and he is actually changing and no doubt saving lives. He is being there probably for people that don't have anyone to be there or don't have, they don't have anybody in their circle that has been through what Art has been through. Six eye surgeries. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the mindset shifts or the places your mind would go going through six eye surgeries? being bullied and things like that. That is just not a nice place to be. So what kind of message today, Art, would you like to leave our audience on? Because I really want people to connect with you. And I love the message of I am, and I am going to shout it from the rooftops as well, because I really support and and your brand and your message behind it is so powerful and it's the message we need, especially in 2020. What kind of message would you like to leave the audience on today? Yes, I wanted to let y'all know that this is one powerful statement that helped me. Don't let your disability affect your ability. And when I say that, not just a, um, mentally, but also excuse me, not just physically, also mentally as well. Don't let your disability affect who you are. Don't let your mindset talk you out of doing things. Don't let your your, your doubt talk you out of doing things. Don't let your fear talk you out of doing what you want to do because you can't do it. There's power in the pandemic. If you turn your pain into purpose, whether it's you no know, a bad um childhood or, or whether it may be, turn your pain into purpose because it's not about us. It's about the people out there that want to hear from us that's also going through it because you never know that one voice or that one person you touch, you start to doing for suicide or start to doing things that could have caused them not to be in this world again. So don't let your disability disqualify who you are. Don't let you know, what it may look like stop you from keep going. You know, and it's purpose and everything you're doing is lessons and adjustments and everything you're doing. If you just continue to grow in it and allow yourself to understand who you are and the power we have within you, and it's going to be okay. And also, if you don't understand, definitely can, I would let it go to a strategy call with any of y'all. Um, and, and we could talk about you know, your plans, your goals, and anything that you may be dealing with that, that you're stuck at. And I would love to help you out as well. Oh, thank you so, so much for being brave to share your story. You're so appreciated. And you can find our podcast on YouTube, the Facebook group, A Victim to Victory podcast series. If you got value from today, please connect with Art. He is changing the world. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Tell your friends about I Am. And I'd like to leave you with a message of step into your story, figure out who you are, and do it on purpose. Thanks a lot, Arthur. Thank you for that, Ms. Trace. Thank you. Thank you so much. You speak you. so well. I had goosebumps when you were talking. Oh, my God, I'm empowered. I'm empowered. I actually work. My full-time job is a job coach with the Australian Government and Disability Services. So I can okay. completely relate to seeing people's abilities instead of disabilities. And I, that's why I really like to give a platform to people who have overcome and helping others because it's just so important. The world just needs that hope and that community at the moment. And you're doing an amazing job and I really hope people connect with you and I'm gonna send your message out to as many people as I can for you. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much as well, I appreciate it. And send me a link where people can contact you, okay? Isn't that sure will. <laughs> Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye bye.